So I had the uh, rock crusher out today while I was making myself some silica for smelting by grinding up a bunch of old wine bottles. And I figured, you know what, while I got it out, might as well crush up my next sample. So this sample we have here, this is from an old small gold and silver mine. And so most of the rocks in the sample are pretty much white quartz with a whole bunch of fine-grained um, sulfides. Think probably mostly pyrite, maybe a little bit of arsenopyrite. I looked pretty closely in all these samples, and I didn't find any calcopyrite or, or, other, or other sulfides. Pretty much just the gray ones. So here's another rock, pretty typical here. This is pretty typical of what you'd expect to find in an old gold and silver mine. A bunch of, you know, white rusty quartz from the old rock dumps. <coughs> Pardon me. <clears throat> I've got some flaky pastry that went down the wrong hole. Oof. Man, oh man. Anyway, that's pretty much what all these look like. Maybe I'll uh, take some pictures closer up with some of these. But uh, yeah, so I think today I'll just smash them up by hand with the sledgehammer to get them to minus one inch. <clears throat> then I'll uh, pop them over there in the little uh, angle grinder rock crusher and pulverize them up. Okay, so I've got my uh, hand crushed rock there down to minus one inch. I'm going to put a little bit at a time in my angle grinder crusher. Then I'll strain it with the sieve, put the undersize in here, keep on going until I do the whole pan. Should take a while actually. Okay, so I've got the sample all crushed up. Stuff is nice and fine. Um, so the next step is I wanna be able to pan it to make a concentrate so I can roast and then smelt the concentrate. But before I pan it, it's always best if you're gonna use a gravity separation method like panning um, to screen it to a couple different size fractions. So what I have here is I have a uh, 30 mesh screen and a 60 mesh screen. And then depending on how much material I get that sits on top, it's retained on the 30 mesh screen, I might actually use a coarser screen as well, like my kitchen streamer, which is about 14 mesh. Uh, and that will break it down into at least three, st three different uh, component sizes. That way I can pan uh, each size individually. So I'm gonna get going with this and I'll get back to you. All right, all done sieving. Here we got our plus 30, our plus 60. This is kind of like fine beach sand. And then we have our minus 60. This stuff is real fine like powder. In fact, some of it was kind of blowing away while I was sieving it. So uh, I don't have my wife's kitchen scale because she took it to work, but I think I'd say about 50% of the weight is in the minus 60. And the other 50% is divided roughly equally between the, um, the uh, plus 30 and the, and the plus 60 mesh size here. I could probably put this stuff it's bigger stuff back in the mill uh, and whiz it up some more to get it so it's kind of passing the 30 mesh screen but um, I think I'm just gonna leave it it'll make it easier to tan and uh, I could always crush some of it up later if the tailings look like they maybe had something in them but 
Now I'm gonna go get a water basin and start panning this stuff out. Okay, got myself a bit of water in a pan. I'm gonna start with the easy stuff, the uh, plus 30 mesh. So it doesn't look like there are a lot of heavies in here. Uh, it's not really surprising because all the sulfides that were in the samples look really brittle and they probably all shattered apart. So we're probably going to find those more in the uh, smaller size fractions than the larger stuff here. So we only got about a teaspoon of concentrate from the um, plus 30 size. So we're going to go with uh, the plus 60 size next, plus 60 mesh. So the uh, minus 30 mesh and plus 60 mesh material is looking a little more promising. Um, there definitely seems to be a higher proportion of heavy minerals in here. Uh, of course it's a little more difficult to pan down, but you can see uh, it's getting pretty dark at the bottom of the pan there. Most of those are sulfide minerals, so um, and this was just a small portion of the, of the minus 30 size. So. Not really expecting any native gold here, but I um, suppose we might as well take a peek just in case. A little difficult with one hand, I'll admit. So I do see a lot of sulfides in there, and maybe there's a speck of free gold right there stain at the top. Then you guys are going to be able to see it, but uh, anyway, lots of sulfides, that's a good sign. Yeah, maybe one or two specks of free gold, hard to tell. Alright, I'll go through the rest of the size fraction and see how much we get. Okay, so for each of the pans that I did in the uh, minus 30 plus 60 mesh uh, sample, it took me about three pans to get through it. There's probably about two little specks of gold in the bottom of each pan, so uh, that was nice to see. And so now the last bag I have is the minus 60 mesh. Uh, it's really fine stuff, so hopefully it won't be too difficult to pan. Uh, I'm starting to wish maybe I had built myself a shaker table, so maybe I'll consider that for a future project. Well, if you've ever wondered how frosh, fl froth flotation works, uh, here's a good example. I just put in the minus 60 mesh stuff and it's so, so fine. And once I finally mixed up some water, you can see that all this, all these gray minerals are, are sticking to the surface tension, right? They're floating right on top of the water. And they're sticking in on top of the, and just coating the bubbles as well. Uh, and that's basically how froth flotation works, is that it preferentially um, attracts certain minerals to the bubbles and rises them to the surface, and then you scoop them right off. Um, you can see it's all kind of st all the silver stuff is sticking to my hand, uh, and then the brown unmineralized stuff is kind of sinking to the bottom. So I'm gonna have to go get some soap or something to to break the surface tension of the water here. Otherwise, all my fine minerals are just gonna float away and stick to my hand. So I'll show you what I mean by breaking the surface tension. You can see all of the metallic minerals, the really fine ones, floating on the surface, and with just a single drop, boom, of dish soap. Uh, you can see it all kind of runs away like that, so now you can mix that up and that should make all those uh, all those minerals sink to the bottom. Okay, so I've uh, finished panning all the samples down, all the sizes. Uh, I've got some concentrate in the bottom of here. I'll drain that water out so you can take a look. But what I wanted to show you is this is, so this is my tailings bin that I was using. And as I mentioned before, there's a lot of these super, super fine sulfides that have been just floating on the surface. And this whole black layer here is rich sulfide minerals that have floated right out of my pan and on the top of the water. And so what I'm going to do is try to save as much as this as possible um, because this is really how froth flotation works. So in addition to building a shaking table, maybe I should also try to build 
some sort of froth flotation cell and then I can reprocess the tailings that are in here try to collect more sulfide concentrate like the stuff I have on my finger here. Okay, so after all of our panning, uh, in here we have our tailings. Uh, some of them are quite slimy. Uh, and in here we have our concentrates. Uh, it's mostly dried out. I'm gonna put it on the kiln just to dry it out a little more so I can get a weight on it. Unfortunately, I forgot to weigh the sample before we started, so I'm not really sure what the concentration ratio was, but um, perhaps I'll, I'll let this, these tailings in the bin here uh, dry out thoroughly and then I can uh, and I can get a weight on them as well. And then once this is uh, once this is all dried up, I'll probably roast it and then uh, and then smelt it and see if we can get any uh, precious metals out of it. Uh, okay, so I've got my scale zeroed out, and now I'm going to weigh my dried concentrate after all that panning. And uh, what do we end up with here? 181 grams of concentrate. Now it's probably from gonna guess probably two or three kilos uh, of ore. I'll, I'll have to weigh the tailings to know just how much it was, but um, you saw visually comparing, it was probably at least you know 20 times uh, the tailings that there were the concentrate. So I'm going to uh, roast this stuff and then I'll mix it up in probably a couple batches to smelt with some flux and uh, we'll see if we can't retrieve any precious metals from it. So I've got my uh, roasted concentrates from sample number two here. Uh, I'm going to take probably 50 grams of them, and I will mix it with about 150 grams of borax, 50 grams of soda ash, and maybe just 20 or 30 grams of silica. And then I'll toss in about 30 grams of lead. And uh, I've got the kiln heating up over there, so I'll get it in the crucible and toss it in there, and uh, we'll see if we can't smelt a nice little lead button from that. Okay, so I have my concentrate all mixed up with my uh, flux recipe, uh, and then I've got uh, 30 grams of these little lead, little lead BBs or lead pellets here. Um, so I'll get those tossed in the crucible and put in the kiln, and uh, we'll see if we can't uh, yeah get a nice little lead button out of that. Look at that. It came out as a nice little perfect dome out of my mold. This mold is great. It's only 10 bucks on Amazon. Even came with a little pestle to grind stuff up. Or maybe a mortar. I'm not really sure which is the mortar and which is the pestle. After our big cupellation there. Took quite a while, it was about 60 grams the lead, so took quite some time to keep out. But we got some gold, it's pretty cool. So I guess we'll see if our little gold bead will register on the scale. And no, wasn't expecting it to, but it doesn't really matter. I kind of forgot to weigh the actual sample itself, so. It's not like I would have been able to calculate a gram per ton or anything like that, but it's always nice to see a little bit of gold for your hard work, even if the scale doesn't want to recognize it. <laughs>